Hello welcome to part 48 of clinical physiotherapy MCQ series. Here we gon discuss day to day clinical scenario with detailed explanation. Now don't waste our time, let's move to question number 236. A patient with early symptomatic human immunodeficiency virus infection is most likely to report which of the following symptoms? Option A fatigue, option B blurred vision, option C easy bruising, option D poor wound healing. And the answer is option A fatigue. Explanation for this question is fatigue is an early symptom of HIV infection. Blurred vision is not associated with early HIV infection. Easy bruising and poor wound healing are found at more advanced stages of the disease. Now let's move to question number 237. A physical therapist is evaluating a patient with back pain. The patient reports having pain that has increased steadily over the last months and is constant and unremitting. The pain radiates into both lower extremities. The patient also feels marked weakness throughout the right lower extremity. What is the most appropriate initial treatment? Option A Discontinue treatment and refer patient to primary care. Physician for further testing. Option B Begin a program of cost strengthening, focusing on transversus abdominis training and progressing toward a long-term stabilization program. Option C Instruct the patient in appropriate lower extremity exercises to improve leg strength, focusing on the right leg. Option D Initiate piriformis stretching as tolerated and instruct the patient in self-mobilization techniques to improve mobility throughout the lumbar spine. And the answer is Option A Discontinue treatment and refer patient to primary care. Physician for further testing. Explanation for this question is Option A Constant pain without any relation to position is a key indicator of spinal cancer. While Option B This would be appropriate for individuals with poor core strength and signs of hypermobility in the lumbar spine. And Option C This would be appropriate for signs of weakness. Also Option D This would be appropriate for signs of piriformis syndrome. Now let's move question number 238. In splinting or immobilization, the functional position of the hand includes wrist extension, phalangeal. Option A flexion, and abduction of the thumb, first digit. Option B extension, and abduction of the thumb, first digit. Option C flexion, and adduction of the thumb, first digit. Option D flexion, and adduction of the thumb, first digit. And the answer is Option A flexion, and abduction of the thumb, first digit. Explanation for this question is, the functional position of the wrist and hand describes the position from which the optimal function is most likely to occur. This position is described as, 1, slight wrist extension, 2, slight ulnar deviation, 3, fingers flexed at the MCP, pip and deep joints and, 4, thumb slightly abducted. Now let's move to question number 239. A patient reports pain around the anterior aspect of the calcaneus extending toward the second metatarsal head. The patient has the most pain when first standing up after waking which gradually lessens throughout the day. The patient has recently begun a walking program. Which of the following disorders is most likely present? Option A medial deviation of the first metatarsal. Option B plantar fasciitis, Option C metatarsalgia, Option D tarsal tunnel syndrome, and the answer is Option B plantar fasciitis, explanation for this question is Option B, plantar fasciitis is typically associated with pain at the anterior portion of the calcaneus and increased symptoms with the first steps of the day that gradually decreases. While option A bunion or medical deviation of the first metatarsal presents with pain over the medial side of the head of the first metatarsal. And option C metatarsalgia is pain localized under the ball of the foot, typically under the head of the first metatarsal, and option D. Tarsal tunnel syndrome presents with numbness and pain throughout the first three toes secondary to the tibial nerve being compressed. Now let's move to question number 240. 
An 82-year-old patient and his caregivers should understand the common side effects of the medication that he is taking. He is continually in and out of congestive heart failure and has been taking digitalis, digoxin, to improve his heart function. You will know he and his caregivers understand the adverse side effects of this medication if they tell you they will contact the patient's physician if he demonstrates. Option A Confusion and Memory Loss Option B Involuntary Movements and Shaking Option C Slowed Heart Rate Option D Weakness and Palpitations And the answer is Option D Weakness and Palpitations Explanation for this question is, Digitalis, Digoxin, is frequently used to treat congestive heart failure, it slows heart rate and increases force of myocardial contraction, adverse side effects of Digitalis can include muscle weakness and supraventricular or ventricular arrhythmias including ventricular fibrillation without premonitory signs. So, that's all for today if you have any doubts please comment below. I think you have learned something valuable today. See you on the next part, that's part, 49. See you till then, bye bye.